Hi everybody, this is Joy at Red Pine Quilt Shop. Welcome to Tuesday Tips and Tricks. Um, today we're actually talking about the twister ruler and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a variety of different sizes. But I want to ta start by talking about how it works and some fun ways that you can use it. Um, so in front of me I actually have just a little table topper that I whipped up with some scraps. Um, so it actually has um, four, three squares sewed together, three rows of three, and a border put on it. So when you're working with the twister rulers, you're always going to start out by sewing a grid of squares first. Um, and then you take the twister ruler and you actually cut the grid apart and that's what puts the twist on the blocks. Um, so you're always going to start out by sewing a grid, um, which is what I've done, in, what you see in front of me. So the ruler that I was working with is the ruler that we call the little twister. And the little twister is actually designed to work with um, five inch squares. So it works great if you have a charm pack, you can sew your charm pack squares together, make a pretty grid, and then you can cut them apart with your little twister. Um, we carry actually three different size twisters in the shop, um, and there are actually more than that. <laughs> um, there's a couple that are actually smaller than this. Um, but they get pretty tiny to work with. We don't normally stack those, but we're happy to order them for you if you would like the smaller sizes. The three that we always stock, though, are the Little Twister, um, which is for five inch squares, the Midi Twister, which is for six and a half inch squares, so six and a half inch squares, and the original full size twister, um, which was originally designed to work with 10 inch squares. So layer cake squares are perfect for it. For it. And we always stock those three. The quilt that you see behind me was actually done with the original twister template. Um, so these were done with layer cake squares. So you can see the, the size difference on it. And they did some fun cave fabrics. So there are actually two more sizes that are smaller than the Little Twister, which like I said, we're happy to order if anyone likes those smaller sizes, but they get pretty tiny. Um, that, um, and I know the one works with two and a half inch squares, um, and I'm trying to think, the other one I think is three and a half, so those are the two smaller sizes. So what I did though, I did the five inch squares, I used the Little Twister, and I made my grid, I added a border to it, and then I started cutting, and I'm gonna pop my pieces out so you can kind of see how they cut and what it looks like as they start to cut up. Um, the thing with the twister is that it's working on that grid. Um, so you can do some fun, fun things with the twister all on your own if you want to, um, because you can take um, an image um, and you can run it through a pixelating application. Application. There's free ones out there on the internet. If you search for pixelate a photo, you'll find a lot. Um, but you can, you can anything that you can make into a grid, you can twisterize. Um, so you know, a lot of people have taken images and they've run them through those pixelating applications, and then they've cut little squares and they've actually sewn the small squares together and made a quilt that looks like their image. You can do that with the twister too. You can sew those squares together and then you can cut them with the twister and it puts just a fun abstract um, look to it because of the effect of the twister ruler. Um, so that's just one fun thing you can do. Um, here I was actually gonna make a little topper with it. Um, you also have the option though to um, maybe just make twister blocks. Um, and use those blocks as cornerstones in a quilt. They're pretty. If you have a panel or something that you're working with, um, it is kind of fun if you're doing a panel and you uh, don't want to do a lot with it, you can actually take and do a twister border with a panel and it adds a lot of interest to your panel without adding a whole lot of work. Uh, so think about ways that you can use twister blocks in other projects as cornerstones, borders, pieced areas. I've seen a lot of people work some fun twister blocks in as just filler blocks for t-shirt quilts if they have unusual sized um, t-shirts and they can't get the size consistent on them.
they'll do a smaller t-shirt and then they'll put some twister blocks around it to get the, the, the block to the same size as the rest of the blocks in their t-shirt quilt. So lots of ways you can use this above and beyond just making a grid and cutting it up. Um, so, so think outside the box with this ruler. There's lots of things you can do. So I want to show you a little more about how it works. Um, so I have actually cut out blocks. So I'll lift out the ones that I've cut and they're coming out at an angle, but when I take them out, I'm going to rotate them so they're square because that's how I would actually sew them back together. So he's coming out at an angle. I'll rotate him back and I'll scooch this over here as I go. So that's how they're coming out and you can see my twister is starting to form. So I'm going to cut one for you guys to get to see what it looks like cut. So that's what you end up with left for scrap. Now, if I'm doing a bigger twister, I will take those squares and I'll knock those out of there and I'll actually cut those into like one and a half or two inch squares and I'll save those and throw those in my scrap bin um, because that's a big enough chunk of fabric. I'll use it for something. But the thing that you'll notice is that the coloration now is following my pattern. So I had a blue square, a green square, a red square, and I'm going to get a blue pinwheel, a green pinwheel, and a red pinwheel. So it's going to always follow what you had, um, what you had laid out in your original grid. Now I'm going to show you how to cut. So I'm coming over actually to my rotating mat and I'm cutting one that's against the border. So my twister has a crosshair on it, but it's set at an angle. So I'm going to lay that crosshair down and I'm going to line it up with the seam line for my border. So I'll line it up with the seam line for my border. I'll line it up with the seam line between those blocks and I don't have anything to line up with there. Now if I was out in the middle, I would line that line up as well. And I'll go ahead and cut and you want to be careful not to cut too far beyond um, is one thing to be cautious of is to not cut too far beyond um, your because you don't want to cut into the next block. So um, when I'm cutting with my rotary cutter, I don't know if Nate can maybe um, your rotary cutter is always going to be cutting right below, you know, so straight down is where it's going to be cutting. So I want basically the very bottom of that nut on my rotary cutter to be at the corner of my ruler. So that's basically where I want to hit. So the very bottom of the nut that's on your rotary cutter right lined up with the corner of the ruler. And then you should have a clean cut. But I try not to go further than that because you don't want to cut into the next block. And you really have some pretty skinny sections here. So we'll see if I got a clean cut. I missed one little spot, just a thread. I always have my little Ulfa scissors handy so that if I need to do a quick little snip, if I didn't go quite far enough, that I can, I can do a quick snip if I need to. And there is the last part of our red pinwheel right there. So you end up with, like I said, a tad bit of waste, not too terribly much. Um, and I would knock those squares out and definitely those would go in my scrap bin. The border fabric I'm not going to worry about because it's got the funky angles on it. Um, but I would save those because I save, I save scraps. I save more scraps than I should. Um, but that's how you would actually cut with the ruler. And I'm just going to show you the placement. So if you are, are out in the middle where you have a full grid, then you want to line up both that seam line and the other seam line before you cut. And then, like I said, just be careful to cut just the side. Don't overshoot by too much because you don't want to cut into um, the area that's going to become your next block. So that is how to cut with the twister. So it's a fun look, um, fun way to burn through some of the scraps that are building up in your stash. We all have those. 
Um, and if you save those squares, then you're going to have more scraps that you're going to put back. But you'll use a lot up. You'll use more up than you put back. Um, so definitely a fun way to a fun way to use up some of the scraps in your stash because you can just make a scrappy um, a whole scrappy grid like that and just use them all up. So um, you can do some fun things. Like here they actually were doing some placement with background color. So this would have started out with a grid with a colored square and a background square and a colored square and, and then a background border here on the edge um, of the background fabric. So rather than having their pinwheels butted right up against the next pinwheel like mine are, they actually ended up with floating pinwheels because they alternated those background squares into the grid. Um, so lots of fun different looks that you can get with the twister ruler. The uh, couple of patterns I was going to show you guys um, that we have um, have stocked because they've always been fun ones um, are these two, the twister pillows and the twister gnomes. Um, we're going to see if we can put a kit together for this for you guys. It's not going to be sampled, but it will be a kit possibly for Twister Gnomes for our um, Facebook Live event tomorrow night. We've kitted that one in the past and sampled it, and we, um, we thought we would maybe do a kit here today if we could find some good fabrics. So the Twister Pillows actually use a little Twister tool, so they use the 5-inch one that I was showing you today. Um, the Twister Gnomes uses a little Twister as well, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I am correct. That's a little Twister. The... Um, tool that I love though with the twister is the twister planner and this is actually a little pattern booklet and it actually covers the little twister the mini twister and the full-size original twister um, are all covered in this book and the neat thing with the book is it gives you um, all of your square sizes and your twisters your twister unit sizes and your finished pinwheel sizes so it gives you some great info in the beginning gives you some basic instructions on how to put it together and how to cut and then it is just full of chart after chart after chart of varieties of sizes to make runners while hanging his baby throw tween up into bed queen sizes um, how much fabric you need how many squares you need um, and it has all of that math done for you so it's a great workbook um, if you are if you have the tools and you want to put them to use it's a great workbook to get you started um, and then you can do your own design as far as how you want to place the fabric but it gives you all the math um, done for you so that's a great a great tool to have um, if you have some of the twister rulers just so that you can easily figure out what you need to have to make and put something together so that is what we had today on the twister um, you will find all of these products up on our website at www www.redpinequiltshop.com. I have shortcuts to the three patterns that I show. The Twister Planner is really not a pattern. It's more of a, a book, booklet, I guess I should say. Um, not a big book, but a booklet. And then um, to these two Twister Pillows and Twister Gnomes and all three sizes of Twister Plus rotating mat which is really a must for cutting these you definitely are going to want a rotating mat um, they are they are so handy to have in so many instances but especially with this where you have to cut all the way around that template and you have to do it without moving the template it's definitely handy to have a rotating mat so if you don't have one of those those are definitely a tool worth investing in and there's shortcuts to all of them up on our website. So again, it's www.redpinequiltshop.com. We are going to sign off and we'll be back with you guys tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Time for in the evening for our regular Wednesday night Facebook Live event. Have a great day.